in terms of the parachute payments, um, you, you likened it to to the Grand National. Um, I would say it's a bit like a handicap race. And if you right. start a yeah, handicap where you are 40 million pounds ahead of the next person, yeah, that's effectively yeah, that's a quarter of a lap. So so th there is a distortion caused by parachute payments. In, in my opinion, they are a necessary evil because mm, if clubs came down from the Premier League, if you've got players who you signed the previous season on a three or four or five year contract, you're paying him 40 or 50 grand a week, you you get relegated and you go from earning 120 million pounds a year in TV money to seven. The, you, if, if, if that was the case and there were no parachute payments, all the clubs that got relegated would go into administration. And, and I don't think that's in anybody's interests. And um, people watching to kill me if I didn't ask, why, why can a contract or a business plan not be written to cope with the shortfall without parachute payments? Is that, is that financially impossible? No, no, it, it, it is possible. Um, and, and I'm quite fortunate that I, I do speak to people in the game and I occasionally chat to chief executives and finance directors who, who run clubs. Uh, so that, that, that's an issue which is discussed. And they say, well, well, for some of our players, that, that's fine. You know, we, we will give them a contract and they will say in the instance of relegation, um, it's a 50 percent pay cut. Uh, but even so, the, the the average salary in the Premier League is is 50 grand a week. If you if you if you reduce it to half, it's still 25 grand a week. You multiply that by you know, a squad of 25, 30 players, and all of a sudden you, you've got a huge amount of money going out. But there's there's a further issue. If you want your club to push on, you want to sign decent players. So. The trouble is you're in negotiations for this new centre forward. He's, you know, he's a remaining international. He's played a few times for, for PSV or a decent side in Spain or wherever it's from. And um, he says, you know, I, want, I want 45 grand a week um, and I'm not prepared to take more than a five grand a week relegation clause. And you're thinking, well, he can get us 15 goals a season. And if he does give us that 15 goals a season, we're going to stay up in the Premier League. And that's worth another 120 million quid in next year. So you take the gamble. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it can be done. But again, it's the seduction factor. You want to play in the Premier League if you own a football club. Yeah, that's perfectly understandable for, for two reasons. A, th there is the glamour factor, no doubt. Um, and B, in the Premier League, you, you're not losing an average of you know, 200, 300 grand a week, wow. uh, which is coming out of your pocket. So so therefore, you, you take that gamble. And if it doesn't come off, then you, at least you do have those parachute payments, which which allow you to deal with these legacy players, you know, that you, you might take you, it might take you 12 months to get him off the books. But at least during that period, you do have enough money coming in, which will allow you to, to pay his wages, and the club doesn't go bust. Um can we just go a little bit deeper on parachute payments? Um, when when did they start, um, and what's their impact on the teams that don't get them? Right, I, I can't remember. I can't remember the year they started. I think they were fairly early on in the uh, in the in the existence of the Premier League. Really? But, I mean, were they just much smaller? That, yeah, they're, they're, but the, the differences in those days were. Were tiny in in the first year of the Premier League, the uh, I think the total revenue of all 22 clubs and and people forget it used to be a 22 club division uh, was 197 million. <laughs> you know, that that's less than Leicester made uh, last season. Yeah, you know, it's, it's absolutely crazy how much it's grown. So the, in the, in the early years there wasn't a big difference. So therefore, yeah, the, the, the amounts, the difference between the Premier League and the Championship, it existed, but it wasn't the chasm that we have at present. Um, so it was, it, it was, it was simply a way of helping out those clubs, and it wasn't a big sum of money, so nobody really cared. Um, in terms of what was your second question was, what was the difference? Um, let me just word it the same way. What's the impact on the teams that don't get them, though? Right. In in your first year of receiving a parachute payment, you will get around about 
um, 40 to 45 million pounds as a parachute payments from the Premier League. In year two, that drops to 34 million. And in year three, that drops to around about 14 or 15. That compares to the standard payout to a championship side who is not in receipt of seven million pounds a year. So we're talking you know, 35 million pounds in year one, 30 million pounds in year two, and about seven or eight in year three. So the total of that 70 odd million advantage Seven, over the three over years. the three years. Yeah. And, and, we, and, and that's in a business where, you know, the average income of a club in the championship that's not in receipt of parachute payments is around about 20 to 22 million. So it, it's it's big bucks. Goodness me. Good. Uh